Mentioned twice in the Book of Acts is a famous member of the Jewish Sanhedrin. He is a Pharisee that, according to Orthodox tradition, was also a secret member of the church. The name Gamaliel means the Lord is my reward. In chapter 5 of the book of Acts, the apostles are arrested and brought before the council of the Jewish leadership, and this is known as the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is furious with these men and wants to put them all to death. However, one wise member of the council stands up in their defense, and because he is so respected in his understanding of the law, the entire council sits back to listen. This man is Gamaliel. Gamaliel basically says to the council that they should let the apostles go. He points out to the council that they've dealt with strange religious groups in the past and that all of these other religious groups have disappeared. He said that once the leader is killed, the group disbands. And here, while they have the apostles, Jesus Christ has already been crucified. So, if this Christian group is indeed just another one of these silly religions, then it will to dissipate. But Gamaliel is also pointing out that if, in fact, this Christian movement is of God, then killing the apostles will mean that they are going against God, and that is something that they should not risk. And Gamaliel's words are listened to. The apostles are reprimanded, but they are released. And of course, the Christian movement does not die, and Gamaliel is there at the very beginning of it. Gamaliel is, outside of the scriptures, one of the most famous Jewish figures of that era. He came from a family of renowned Jewish scholars. His grandfather was known as Hillel the Great, a man of such deep peace that there is a story saying two men had a bet as to whether they could make Hillel angry. Both of them tried all sorts of different things and Hillel just continued being peaceful and loving to both of them. That deep peace was clearly inherited by Hillel's grandson Gamaliel who brought it there to that council in Acts chapter 5. In fact, in Judaism today, Gamaliel is still held up as being one of the greatest teachers of the law that the religion has ever had. But intriguingly, the Orthodox Church holds to a tradition that he did in fact follow through with that question that he was asking in Acts 5, is this movement of God, and that he followed it through to become a member of the Christian faith and was baptized in secret by Peter and by John. And that, over the course of his life, as a member of the Sanhedrin, this great Jewish council, he tried to maintain a peace between the Jewish authorities and this small new movement of Christians, which was, at the time, primarily a Jewish faith. It is also said that Gamaliel was a close friend of Nicodemus, and Nicodemus, in turn, was a close friend of Stephen the deacon. Neither Gamaliel nor Nicodemus were in Jerusalem during Stephen's trial and death, and it is said that Nicodemus and Gamaliel, and Gamaliel's son Abibon, were amongst the devout men mentioned in Acts that took away Stephen's body for burial. This secret tomb on Gamaliel's estate was regularly visited by Nicodemus, and it is said that Nicodemus, after being thrown out of the synagogue when it was discovered that he was a Christian, went to the side of Stephen's tomb and prayed there, and that during that prayer, he died. Gamaliel buried his friend Nicodemus alongside Stephen. A story of Gamaliel recorded in the Jewish Talmud says that he had one student that was slightly unruly, and some scholars believe that perhaps this impudent student was a man named Saul, who took the understanding of the law from Gamaliel, but not necessarily his understanding of a peaceful God, choosing to follow the letter of the law, but not the peace, in a persecution of Christians, and that this Saul became the holy apostle Paul, who mentions in the book of Acts that he studied the law at the feet of Gamaliel. Gamaliel himself was buried in his own family tomb, and as time passed and upheavals around Jerusalem caused things to be forgotten, Gamaliel's estate and the location of the tomb was lost until the beginning of the 5th century. In AD 415, a priest in Israel called Father Lucian had a dream in which a man with a long white beard came to him. He called him by name and told him to go to a particular location to find a tomb in which he would find the relics of St. Stephen the First Martyr, St. Stephen the Deacon. Father Lucian did not recognize this white-haired man and asked him who he was, and Gamaliel introduced himself to him. He said that in the tomb alongside the relics of St. Stephen, he would find the relics of St. Nicodemus and of Abibon, St. Abibon, Gamaliel's own son, as well as Gamaliel's own body. 
When Father Lucian woke up, he was not sure what to believe. He was not very familiar with Saint Gamaliel and didn't know much about him. Father Lucian's advisors thought maybe there was something in it, but Father Lucian was doing the right thing, obeying a biblical precedent to question spirits. The next night, however, Father Lucian had another dream. Gamaliel came to him again and said, No, I am not a demon, I am not an imagination, I am a friend of Christ and a friend of yours, and what's taking you so long? The next morning, Father Lucian immediately, first thing, went to Jerusalem. When he arrived in Jerusalem, he set about immediately following the instructions of Gamaliel, which was to go to Patriarch John II and tell him about the tomb. While on his way there, he met another priest named Father Megatius, and Megatius asked him what he was doing in Jerusalem, and Father Lucian told him about the dream with Gamaliel, and this other priest said, oh, you too, that's why I'm in Jerusalem. And together these two priests went to the Patriarch and told him of their dreams. The Patriarch, struck by these two men's story, immediately summoned several other bishops whose names are recorded, and together with the priests, they traveled out to this location of the lost estate of Gamaliel. There they found the tomb where Gamaliel had said it would be in the dream, and when they opened it, a sweet and strong fragrance came from within, and they had found the relics of Stephen, of Nicodemus, of Gamaliel and Gamaliel's son, Abibon. This finding of their relics is celebrated by the Orthodox Church every single year on the 2nd of August. And so, for centuries, every single year, the Orthodox Church has remembered Saint Gamaliel, a man who lived up to his name. He was a secret but loyal friend of God, and the Lord was his reward. We're accompanying this episode with a cup of Persian tea that is black tea with saffron, and it's nice with honey. It isn't very good when it's on its own, it tastes a bit bitter, but it is very pleasant. I really wanted to do an episode on Gamaliel. I love his story, but also I love the fact that his name sounds like he's an elf from The Lord of the Rings.